We've talked about how digital waveforms are used to carry binary information. This binary information is what is called data, a group of bits that convey some type of information. So we need something that sends this data and we need something that receives this data. While this is an important aspect of digital electronics, we won't get into it until much later. What I want to focus on briefly is how the data gets transferred. Let's say we need to send information from the computer's memory to the CPU to be added. The result is then sent from the CPU to the monitor. What we will talk about are the two ways that this data transfer occurs, called serial and parallel. First, let's look at serial. The dictionary definition of serial just means that something happens in a series. That's what's happening in series data transfer. One bit is read at a time until all the bits have been read. This also means that it takes as long to read the data as there are bits. Let's say, for instance, that we have a string of 8 bits, like in the picture here. If the clock that the data is set to is 1 megahertz, then the period is 1 microsecond. So to read 8 bits would take 8 microseconds. We'll look at an example at the end of this video, but for now, it's important to note that each bit being read takes one time interval to read. Next, we have parallel data transfer. In parallel data transfer, multiple bits of data are read at the same time. So, as in our picture here, if we are transferring 8 bits of data in parallel, it only takes one time interval to transfer the data, as opposed to 8. You can imagine, then, that there is some sort of trade-off occurring here. And there is. With serial data transfer, only one line is needed to transfer the data. However, it takes longer. With parallel transfer, much less time is needed to transfer the data, but you need more lines to carry the data. Now let's look at an example. We have a digital waveform that represents the clock and one that represents our data. The clock has a frequency of 1 MHz. First, what is the data bit sequence? Second, how long does it take to serially transfer the 8 bits of data? And third, how long does it take to transfer the same 8 bits of data in parallel? We can answer the first part using a timing diagram. Unless told otherwise, always assume that the data is read on the leading edge of the clock. With our data lined up with the clock, we can see that at bit time 1, the data is high, so it is 1. At bit time 2, the data is high, so it is 1 as well. At bit time 3, the data is low, so this will be 0. 4 is high, so 1. 5 is low, that's a 0. 6 is high, and that's a 1. 7 is low, so that's 0 and 8 is low, so that is 0. Our bit sequence is 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0. Now to find how long it takes to transfer this bit sequence serially. We need to find the period of the clock. Once we have that, we multiply by 8, since there were 8 bits that had to be read one right after the other. So remember that the period is 1 divided by the frequency. Our frequency is in megahertz, and we need to be in hertz. Mega is the prefix for million, so to write this another way, we have 1 divided by 1 million hertz. This comes out to a very small number, 0.0000001 seconds. Now this is the same as 1 microsecond. So the period of the clock pulse, and thus the time it takes to transfer 1 bit, is 1 microsecond. Multiplying by 8 for 8 bits gives us 8 microseconds. It takes 8 microseconds to transfer these 8 bits serially. Last, we want to know how long it takes to transfer 8 bits in parallel. Since all the bits are transferred in one clock pulse, and the period of one clock pulse is one microsecond, it takes one microsecond to transfer the 8 bits in parallel. So there's a little overview of digital data transfer. As a concept, I think this is much easier to grasp than analog data transfer. That stuff can get real messy real fast. I'll see you in the next video where we discuss the basic logic functions. See you then!